So welcome to the today uh, to the second episode of uh, family businesses and understanding family businesses. And today we're going to talk about something which I think is very important and, and, and something that most people, most families um, discuss and talk about all the time. And I think it's very important, but the way they handle it is less than perfect and it usually ends up causing a lot more problems than, than actually sets out to, to fulfill. Um, most families think about family planning in terms of the business. How do you succeed from person X to person Y in the business? But they don't focus on family planning within the family because it's not just family business, it's family business. So there's a family part which people seem to tend to forget. And because of that, you then have a lot of failures, a lot of horror stories. And the failure doesn't necessarily mean that the family collapses or the family business collapses, but you can start to see the family aspect unwind uh, and problems start to happen because the right person who should be leading the family might not necessarily be the right person leading the business. And the per right person leading the business might not be the right person leading the family. You need to have an understanding of the different aspects and different nuances of both to be able to find and if you're, uh, to find the right person to lead, to lead either or both. If you're lucky, you get a person who does both. And believe me, a person who does both mediocre, uh, less than perfect, is still better than one who leads one perfectly and screws up the other. Because then you'll end up having a great business and no family, or you have a great family unity and no business. You want, it's, it's, it's a balance act. It's a balancing act. So with that in mind, so you come up to the issues of the horror stories within family businesses. And I'm sure you would want to hear some of these stories. Again, because these stories could be very personal. I have to be, I have to be very, a bit very um, cautious as to which examples I give. So I'd rather talk about the idea overall than tell you stories about family businesses, in a particular family business. Because if I did that, I might also be uh, breaking trust. Because in a family business, everything uh, works on the issue of trust and how we interact with one another. Even if they're not a member of my family, but it's another family business we interact with, they'll tell me their story, I'll tell you my story, and we want to learn from one another. So with that in mind, I'm a bit cautious in terms of stories to tell you about different families. But I'll give you an understanding about families in terms of how they work and the dynamics that work within the family business regarding succession planning. So um, person A, uh, company A has a uh, uh, well-organized, well-run machine that, that does the business for them all the time. And yet, the founder or the person who's in charge is reaching a point where he or she needs to uh, change or help create the change. The natural instinct is to pick somebody I like. Irrespective of whether this person is qualified or not, I'll pick the person I like. Or I'll pick the person who sends me the right notes that resonate with me. Now, it could be all fluff, a beautiful game that he or she plays with me until he or she gets in that position. And we have a saying in Arabic, which I'll, I'll say it in Arabic and then I'll translate it in English. Temesken lima temakken. He made himself uh, vulnerable and, uh, and poor and, and sweet, you know, until he or she took over and then changed the dynamics. The dynamics changed. And most people, because we want to believe the other party, especially if it's a family member, is what we're looking for. Uh, they listen to us, they agree with us, they do stuff we, in the same direction we are. So we'll pick them, take them on board. I'm just talking, I'm, not, I'm talking, I'm focusing on the business. I'm not even starting on the, on the family, just on the business. So we'll choose the person who we think, ah, he or she is going to complete my legacy. The only person who can continue your legacy is you. The reason I say that is because the, uh, you, the person who is running the business, know exactly what you're looking for. 
the other party, the one who you're thinking to bring in as a successor, might uh, agree with some of your ideas, but will bring in his or her own different ideas. And a lot of people are not ready for that. So they will give up the ghost, as they say, as in they'll pull themselves out of the business uh, or um, put themselves one step back to allow this person to take over for a while. This is one of the, the method, methods that happen with in family business succession. They will let this person take over for a while, but they're always in the background, meaning at any point they don't like what's happening, they jump in, which kind of defeats the purpose of a succession planning because you just made this person look dumb. Not a good thing, especially when you cease to exist and that person has actually taken over. That's not a good thing. The other thing is, how qualified is this person to the job? I might have 25 degrees, 30 degrees from different fantastic universities, but I don't understand the, the, the job description that's required for this position. I might be great at management and horrible at leadership. I might be a, fanta a fantastic orator, a great leader, but I don't know how to manage. We don't take these things into account. This is the problem. Because if you don't understand these aspects, they will come back to bite you. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. In terms of the successor, is he or she qualified as far as experience is concerned? Do they understand what is expected of them? Are they ready for it? Will they take on the burden? Because it is a burden. People jump on the opportunity to take to have authority. But they don't understand the responsibility that comes with this authority. It's not free. It's not a free lunch. But in their minds, they're thinking, it is. I'm now sitting in this position. I can do whatever I want. I'm the ultimate dictator. I'm the ultimate king. What they will quickly realize is that king is going to be bombarded with things that he or she is not prepared for. And this is where the family aspect comes in. I might be ready from the business perspective, meaning I wanted the authority to be able to do the changes and affect the changes and fix and move the company in the direction I want to go. Great, you can. But now you have your sister, your son, your aunt, your cousin, uh, your nephew, your in-law, whatever the case may be, depending on how the family structure is worth, who come and tell you, my house is not working. Can you loan me this? Uh, uh, can you help my child get into this university? And you're thinking, why are you bombarding me with things that really don't matter to me? You will not say it. You're thinking it. You're not saying it. Because as far as you're concerned, you're thinking, these are expenses. And the business is an income. My business brings me money. You take away my money. You also have the other added uh, thought process. And this is a very dangerous one. When you become, when you succeed in that position, you start thinking, this business is mine. I control it. I handle it. It's my legacy. It's my name. It's my position. Nobody else has a, a right to it. If it's a sole ownership, then you are correct. But if it's not a sole ownership, if it's a partnership, or if it's a shareholding structure, etc., it's no longer the case, and you can't do that. But the mindset thinks, it all belongs to me. I can control it, I can do whatever I want. No, you can't. And this is what I'm saying, talking about the horrors and the failures that will happen within our family businesses. And if you alienate enough people, you will have a quiet revolt happening. If you're lucky, they'll be open. If you're unlucky, it'll be quiet and seditious. And there will be the formula for a failure. This is why I'm trying to say succession planning sometimes is not thought through properly. The easier one is the business because it's clear cut and you know exactly what to expect. 
uh, a bit of edu you need education of certain kinds, formal education, informal education, you need experience, you need connectivity, you need networking. These are the easy part to get done because you're doing it every day in your life of business if you're a part of a family business. The harder part is the soft touch, which is the family part, where all of these things are happening. So if today I have a family member who has, who's not married, and I have another family member who's married and has 10 kids. I know I'm exaggerating here, but go with, the, go with the thought. The one who has 10 kids needs them to be fed, uh, clothed, uh, educated, and medical. And he's expecting you, as the family, to pay for it. The one who has no kids is thinking, why am I paying for his or her kid? or in this case, 10 of them. He's going to get angry. He will not say it. There is a part of the, there are some people who are very generous. They are by their nature, they're very generous, and they're happy to see their, uh, their brethren, their cousins, their children succeed and be happy. They're there, but they're few. The majority will seethe inside and say, why is person X or person Y getting more benefit from the family than I am. And they will get angry. And they'll fight it. These are small little issues that happen from within a family when succession planning happens. So the one with the kid, uh, sorry, the one with the many children, necessarily will try to fight to become the leader. Because he's seeing, he or she, is seeing a benefit for his line of the family. The one who is not married or has or is married and has no kids, he or she is not necessarily thinking about the future per se. It's it's more of an idealistic idea for him, you know, keeping up the family name, keeping up the image, etc. But when he or she dies, there's no continuation for them. So they're not too concerned. These dynamics are family related. They're not business related. And the dynamics of this will affect how you create who is going to be the successor. Every successor from the, from the person who is running the business, every successor is thinking along his or her own line. They're not thinking along the lines of the business as a whole. They're not thinking along the lines of the family as a whole. There might be there in, to some degree but they're really immediately thinking about their kids. That is a driver. You cannot discount that driver when you see people positioning themselves to be successors. You do have people who will clamor to be the successor. And you'll have people who will distance themselves from being a successor. Because being a success, uh, the person who comes after, comes with a lot of burden. You have to live up to certain things that you might not want to do. Uh, 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 you might not be ready to listen to people complain. You might not be ready to, to go through the hell and headaches that a family member will come bring to your attention. You might be really good at the business, but the other part, the soft part, is not something you really don't like. And, and, the, and the other way around is also the case. Where you have people who are very happy to handle the family aspects but really don't know how to manage the business because it's, it's outside. That one actually is an easier situation because you can actually hire external professional managers to manage the business while you take care of the family. It's the one that's, which most people focus on in succession planning, which is, I want to be running the business and you know, we will handle the family as, a, as an afterthought. That's the hard part. When you sit and talk to those who don't want to be to run the business or run the family, the, the, the business of the family, not, not the business itself, but rather the business of the family, uh, fixing houses, uh, paying for vacations, paying for medical. You know. When you have people who are like that, it's usually a good sign that these are the people you want to talk to and help build them up because they don't want it. If somebody wants something so bad, 
there is a certain mindset that kicks in. And that might not, might not necessarily be good for the end goal of whatever he or she is doing. Um, I, I'll give you an example within my family um, in terms of what it means to run a family business and then to create a, the succession planning. And it's not negative or positive. I'm not making a moral judgment on my uncles who I'm going to talk about because I think highly of both of them in a different manner, in a different way. I will start with my uncle Ahmed, who was the chairman of the family and the, and the, uh, the, the boss of the uh, He was the uh, chairman of the, of the company and he was the boss of the family. And he had, uh, uh, socially, he had an incredible position in terms of how people were perceiving him, not just within the family, but also within the, re uh, within the, the country and within the region. And he had a, a mindset of making sure that Everybody got, from the family, everybody got, everybody got everything equally. Liked you, hated you, no matter. If I gave a thing to a person, all the other people of the same uh, age or same gender would get the same thing. So um, when he went, to, for, for example, when he went to China and he ca came back uh, from uh, China, this is in the 80s, early 80s. I remember every family, uh, every family member, uh, every family branch uh, got Chinese carpets. I'm thinking Chinese carpets. Yeah, in the 80s, Chinese carpets are different than Chinese carpets today. They were significant. Uh, if he bought jewelry for person A, all of the same people of the peer of that uh, person got the same thing. It's an easy way, or it's an easier, less uh, uh, constructive thought uh, process, because it just says, I want to make sure everyone feels that he or she is equal. He was a dragon in the way he addressed things. You didn't want to interact with him too much. But you knew at least you were getting a fair shake. Problem is, I was looking at this as a child, looking at him in terms of sorry, how the interaction was happening. And I realized one thing. He'd come... He was an elderly gentleman when I was in my um, teens paying attention to this. He was an elderly gentleman in his 60s by the time when I was in my teens um, who'd go from house to house. He had, he had a, a hunch in his back, so it was not easy for him to walk. He's an elderly gentleman, not easy for him to walk. He has a hunch in his back, but he'd do every weekday house to house, passing by, do you have everything, Is something missing, do you need anything, how are the children, and it wasn't a soft, it wasn't soft the way I'm, I'm talking about it, it was actually very harsh, uh, but the feeling within the family was, he was going to come every day to check to see everything is okay. Was it appreciated by the family? No, because every time he left the house, someone would be complaining about, look, he's spoiling our afternoon, look, he's asking this, why is he always bothering us coming doing this? And I, and I was looking at this and thinking, here's a man who really is, doesn't have to do this, making an effort, all right? His method in terms of interacting is not sweet, but he's making an effort to come in and talk and making life, asking, is your life better? And I looked at this and I said, hell, even when a person is trying to go out of his way to make your life better, from the family aspect, not the business, he was getting attacked. Never in his face, it was always behind, <laughs> behind closed doors, but still, you could see that. So when you think about succession and that, who wants to be in that position? Even when you are the best in terms of being equal to everyone, whether you like them or hate them, even then you cannot win with people because you don't know who's going to attack. When you find a person who says, I don't want this, they're usually a person who say, no, 
He's, he or she is a person I think should be doing this because they're the ones who are not going to try to uh, uh, placate others, but rather try to do what's best. But that works again in the family. In the business, he was succeeded by his uh, younger brother, uh, Abdullah, who was, for me, uh, and even though I had a lot of differences uh, interacting with him, a business genius. I saw him pull rabbits out of, the proverbial rabbit out of the hat, in places he shouldn't have done, and he couldn't have done. Was he brilliant at that, from the business aspect? He was. As far as the family is concerned, because there were issues that he did not want to interact with, it just was too much of a burden. He was the ideal successor from a business perspective, and not an ideal successor from a family perspective. This is why I say trying to find a perfect successor from a business and family is very hard to find. Families have different requirements, and they, the, people who's lead, the people who lead the family have, have, need to have different criteria. And those who lead the business have different criteria, and it's very hard to have an intersection between the two. But if you're lucky, and you can find somebody who can do that, great. Now, generational aspect. When you're talking about first generation, second generation, the numbers are small. Second generation to the third generation, the number becomes larger. Third to the fourth becomes even larger. And we're talking exponential larger here. And you talk, start talking about the fifth, sixth, seventh, it becomes even more exponentially larger. The pool that you can pull from as you go down the generations is larger, but not necessarily better in quality because they're detached. The pool from the uh, first to second generation, second to third generation, is smaller but better from a family perspective in terms of succession because they are interacting and interlocked with one another. So they have a better understanding of what, is, what each person looks for and wants. I'm not saying necessarily that one is better than the other. I'm just saying that there are, there are things that are advantages in generation A and some that are gen then generation Z have a better advantage of. How the family interacts with in terms of who is the person who leads? Well, in a lot of societies, it's usually done by social norms. And the social norms in terms of succession is my eldest son. Well, what if your eldest son happens to be a 25 watt bulb? versus your daughter, who happens to be incandescent as far as abilities and knowledge. If a family is smart, they will not be allowing social norms to dictate. They will be seeing what is best in the benefit of the family, both in terms of the business and the family, and allow that person to run the show. It might be even smarter to say, you know what? We'll split the role. This person runs the family, and this person runs the business. I will also suggest oh, a great way, if you want to do that, because of succession, by splitting the role, you give two people an opportunity to rise up. Subsequently, you give hope for more members of the family to move up. Versus if it's just one role and the, and the pyramid looks like this, well, there's always going to be just one role. Is that good for the family? Each family, in terms of how they interact with one another, will show. Then you also have the issue of to what degree do, does each person have as a shareholding? So if I have 50% of the business, 
and uh, the one who is really, really qualified has only 5%. Do I take over because I own 50%? Or do I let the person with 5% take over because he or she is better qualified in either the family or in the business? These are where family dynamics and interacting with one another becomes important. Communication becomes very important. But, but in succession planning, sadly, most people don't even have communication. They don't talk to one another. There's no discussion. There'll be an edict, a draconian edict coming from up high saying you will do exactly this. Is that a good thing? I'm, I'm asking these things, and I'm telling you these things uh, as in, in form of a question, because each family will have his or her own way of uh, interacting and communicating. The more there is communication, the better there is a chance of having the right successor in the position. There are personalities you should be aware of in succession. I will, I, will hand, I will talk about this, not necessarily in succession, but rather when we talk about personalities. Because I think the personalities have a great effect in terms of how anything functions and anything succeeds or slash fails. Succession is a key aspect of generational benefit to families. Choose the right person and you have a great chance of extending the legacy. Choose the wrong person, and you will quickly see the negative effect of this person onto both the family and the business. People change, and I keep this in mind. The person who is a fiery, strong character who's building and willing to create and do when he or she is in his 20s or her in 20s or 30s, as they grow older, become more and more set in their mindset and becomes harder and harder for them to be the revolutionary or the evolutionary, which is even better, and they become the establishment. And as I say, I say this a lot, and I believe this, when people are in opposition, they're idealists. When people are in power, they're realists. As I grow older, if succession happens from an 80-year-old to a 60-year-old, whether it's in the business or in family, I have a person who's looking less at the future and more at the past. If I bring in somebody in his 20s or her 20s, I might be looking at somebody who's looking, seriously looking at the future. However, have no experience of what issues to be aware of and will fall into the same traps that their parents would have done. Having a balance of people who are dynamic enough, I don't, I'm not gonna fix, fix, put the fixture of an age, but have to be dynamic enough understanding enough, willing to listen, willing to communicate, willing to get an idea across, he or she is the ideal successor. 